Hi, everyone. My name is Kit Kelleher, and I'm a learning specialist with the Office of Disability Services here at Bristol Community College. Specifically, I work at the New Bedford campus, um, but I try and help all students as well as work with our professional staff. Um, I go by the pronouns of she, her, and hers. And I am a long time educator, but I always feel like I'm a learner first and foremost. I learn as much from my students as hopefully they do from me. Um, so I'm going to be sharing a session on planning and time management. This is part of the Strategies for Success professional development series that the Multicultural Student Center has been offering for the fall semester. So we are re-recording this session so that students can perhaps start and stop this on their own, maybe check out a few of the tools or strategies that will be shared, as well as look at some of the resources that go along with this recording. So I invite you to view this at your leisure, at your convenience, and hopefully you can pick up a couple of tools, tricks, or tips that will be helpful for you with your own time management. So I wanna begin by maybe having a little reflection question. So just think about this for a minute. What is your time management monster? We all have them, no matter how organized we are, every single one of us has some kind of an issue with planning and time management. So consider some of these top time management monsters, maybe planning your own daily tasks, whether they're school related or life related, maybe planning weekly tasks, maybe trying to plan long term projects, whether it's getting ready for a trip, writing your research project or just reading that novel that you say you're always going to get to. How about starting or finishing your work in a timely manner. And when I say timely, I don't mean like within two weeks. I mean like within a day or two, within an hour or two. Knowing how much time is really needed for a task. Do we really give ourselves enough time to get to the mall, to go grocery shopping, to read an assignment? Sometimes that might be one of our time management monsters. How about using devices or tools that could possibly make our lives just a little bit easier? Maybe one of our time management monsters is spending too much time on other things that tend to get in the way, such as Netflix or TikTok. I know there's a lot of us out there. Maybe you have troubles with giving yourself time to relax or giving yourself a break. These are just some of the time management monsters that can really invade our life, but I think they're really important to consider. So as we go through the slides in this session today, kind of keep coming back to this page and think about your own time management monster, because one of the very first things that we need to recognize is in order to change a habit, we need to kind of understand what our habits are. And we need to understand what's working for us as well as what is not working for us. That's a really important part of all of this shift and change in how we create and plan our own lives. So let's start with a little bit of background as to what this is all about. We talked about our time management monsters or our planning monsters, but what is time management and planning? What really is that about? So it's really about the executive functions that we all have in our brains. And there's a reason there's a suitcase here, and I'll show that to you in just a minute. But some of the executive functions that we all have the ability to do have related to planning and time management, maybe our own self-regulation and how we can kind of regulate our emotions or advocate for ourselves, our own attention or focus, memory, recall, these are just some of those executive functions. But just for today, 
we're really going to just focus on planning and time management. Because if you really think about it, you can't have one without the other. And there's a lot of people who would say that planning, prioritizing, and time management really all go together. And again, there's that suitcase. So why do I have a suitcase here trying to uh, resemble executive functions? We'll find out in just a second. Throughout this session, you're going to see a slide that looks like this with that little green on button. It's kind of like that power button. Um, consider this a strategy to help push your on button or your power button to try something different. Whenever it's time to create a new habit or change an old habit into a better habit, we think we just have to go gung-ho with things. But really, there's, there's easier ways of doing this. And one of the things I, I like to tell people or might teach my students is start simple. No, don't just start simple, but do just one thing differently. Sometimes we try and take on too many things and it doesn't work. I kind of equate it to going on a diet. Um, you know, we've been all going through a very strange time in our lives this last year and a half. And, you know, maybe some of us, self-included, have maybe put on a few extra pounds and we'd like to get rid of that COVID-19 that it's so been so referred as. Um, well, you know, I could go on a diet. I could try the Weight Watchers diet and the Jenny Craig diet, and I could do the South Beach diet and then the keto diet and the cookie diet. Would love a cookie diet, by the way. Um, but you know what? If I tried all of those diets at once, how will I know which one really works? And am I really going to be faithful to all of those diets all at the same time? No, absolutely not. So be kind to yourself. Try and think of one thing that you're really open and willing to try to do differently and stick with that. So even if you walk away from this session, just doing one thing a little bit differently or trying just one thing, give yourself a reward for that because that's the beginning of a new positive practice for yourself. Think about tools or strategies that you already know about or that you already have. It's not about going out and buying the latest or greatest gadget or tool or app, although those could be wonderful for you, but there might be things right in your, your own home or in your own work environment that could work really well for you. And I'm going to be showing you a couple of things that, that we all probably have somewhere in our living arrangements. Maybe you might need to set a reminder for yourself, whether it's a sticky note or a timer, that you're going to try something new every day. So maybe at two o'clock every afternoon, you're going to try this new strategy or tool. But don't give up after a couple of days. Keep trying it. Whenever we need to do something different or something new, we need to stick to it for a while. So if you, if you didn't do it one day, just get back up and try it again the next day. Don't give up on yourself that easily. And always be kind to yourself, okay? We're, we're all a work in progress. We have a lot going on in our lives. So if we forget to do something, there's always tomorrow or there's always tonight to try something new and different. So there's our suitcase. It came back to us. So when we think of executive functions, I told you that those are those things like planning, time management, and attention, and recall, and memory, and, and self-regulation. There's, there's a lot of different habits that go along with, with executive functioning. So how do these relate to traveling? Well, as wonderful as going on a trip can be, it can also be very stressful. There's usually a lot of things that we need to do. And Getting ready for a trip is actually a really great time to start thinking about what kinds of executive functions we need to use in order for our trip to happen and to happen successfully. So think about all those things that you need to do beforehand. If you have pets, you need to call the vet or a, 
or the boarding place or, or a relative to take care of your pets. You need to pack your clothes. You need to make sure that you get everything that you need for the weather and the temperatures. You, you know, do you take medications? Do you need to take those? Do you need to let someone know that you're going to be leaving and they need to water your plants or check your mail? Um, if you're traveling by car, do you need to get your car checked out before you go? If you're traveling by airfare, do you need to make sure that you have your tickets and your boarding and all of that? There are so many things that happen before we go on a trip. So that suitcase really is a resemblance of our executive functions. But sometimes when we're really not sure what to pack or how to plan, our suitcase looks like this. And that's because we become so overloaded with what we need to do, we just decide to throw everything that we can into our suitcase and hope that it closes. But many times it doesn't because we threw in too many pairs of shoes or too many pants or too many jackets. And all of those things do not fit. Or we get to the airport, we have to weigh our suitcase and it's way over 50 pounds. And then we have to start taking some things out. Well, you know what? That suitcase and that overstuffed suitcase that we see right there on the screen really resembles what happens to our brains when there's so much going on. And then we need to rely on our executive function skills to get us through the day. So let's talk about where that suitcase really belongs in our brain. We all have a suitcase that stores our executive functions, and that's right in the very beginning part of our brain called the prefrontal cortex. Not only is that important to know, but as college students, especially if you're a college student who's starting college after high school or at least a couple of years after high school, that area of your brain may still be developing because it is the last area of the brain to develop. They say that it generally um, fully develops within the, the 20s, within your 20s. So if you're a, a teenager and you're starting college, or if you're in your early 20s starting college, that, that area of your brain is still developing or just kind of coming to the end of developing. But there's stuff that's always going in that area of the brain and then being kicked out or going back into the other parts of our brain for long term. So that prefrontal cortex is an area that stores a lot of information. It's where new information goes in. So when we're in class and we're learning new terms and new formulas and new information, it's all going in that prefrontal cortex before it then travels to a longer term area of our brain. Our emotions go in that prefrontal cortex. Our ability to make decisions is in that prefrontal cortex. Not only do we have those things being stored in that suitcase area, but when we're sick, when we're tired, when we're hungry, all of that is also stored in our prefrontal cortex. So imagine you're just having a really rough day or you're not feeling well, you've got a lot of things coming at you. There's a lot of things for you to remember and you feel stuck. All of a sudden, it's like everything just went out the window. Why? You know why? Because your suitcase is stuffed and all of a sudden things are getting kicked back out. And that happens to us. It happens to us a lot. So if you're feeling that way, but you know that there's things that you need to do and there's decisions you need to make, what is it that you can kind of let go of so that you can spend more time on that planning and that time management? So hopefully that's a little helpful uh, tidbit to kind of understand where all of those areas are kind of stored and why you may feel the way you do when, you're, when you just become so exhausted because you feel like your brain is an overload. Well, there is a reason for that. So just remember that suitcase of your brain, it has a lot of power, but it needs some love and tenderness too. That's why rewarding yourself, giving yourself breaks is super duper important because your brain is getting really tired and it's tiring the rest of your body and ability to do things. So where do we begin? Well, remember I said at the very beginning that as you're going through this, 
I, I welcome you and invite you to kind of stop along the way and maybe do some of these activities. They can be really helpful. So we're gonna start with things that we're, we already know about, things that we're already comfortable with. As you become more aware of some of these tools and strategies, start applying them to things that you're not so comfortable with, such as your schoolwork, homework, long-term projects, things in life that you've been avoiding for a while that you need to do. So let's think about your day or my day. Let's, let's just kind of think about what happens throughout our day. Okay, there's, there's a lot that happens from sunup to sundown, getting up to going to bed. So let's add all of these up. So I invite you, if you wanna get a sticky and write this down, or if you just wanna do it mentally, either way, that is fine. I'm just gonna kind of give what might happen for me. So sleep. I'd like to think that I sleep seven hours a day. I don't always, but that's kind of an average that I might sleep. Personal care, very important. Taking a shower, brushing my teeth, you know, those, those kinds of typical daily events. Driving, driving to and from work or driving to appointments. That time really does add up as well. We don't get, probably give ourselves enough credit to how much time we spend either in the car or going to and from places. Work, whether you have a part-time job, a full-time job, it takes up time in your day. Eating, whether you eat with your family or eat by yourself, we still have time of getting prepared for our food and then actually sitting down and tasting it and enjoying it. For some of us who are in school doing our homework, where what does your homework look like? How much time are you spending with that? Or for some of you, you might really just love to read leisurely and you just pick up that book every night before you go to bed. Your other homework, whether it's your math or your writing or doing research or doing some kind of a lab or an observation, how much time are you spending on that? Do you exercise? Do you do something for self-care for yourself? Whether it's just going for a walk, taking your dogs for a walk, working out on your Peloton, you know, whatever. So add up all of the things that you do during the day. Try not to miss anything. That's why I said, if you want to stop and pause right here, this would be a really good time to do this. But add up all of the things that you typically do in your day and then add all of them up. So we're going to add up mine right now and find out that it comes to 22 hours. Well, gosh, if I, if I really think about time of a the day, there's 24 hours in a day and look, I've already filled up 22 of those 24 hours. That really doesn't leave me a lot of room for a lot of extra things. The reason that's important for me to recognize is if I am going on TikTok or YouTube or Netflix and I find that I'm watching three or four hours of self-care videos or dance videos, I can see right here, I don't have three or four hours in my day to be doing that. And chances are, if I am spending more time doing things that maybe I shouldn't be spending so much time on, there's a reason why I'm not getting to my homework. There's a reason that I feel blobby because I'm not exercising or I'm not getting enough sleep. So maybe one of the very first journeys in your own planning and time management is really trying to figure out where your time is actually going. And that's something that a lot of people probably are not aware of or cognizant of. So I invite you to do that activity and, and see where all of your time is going and be honest, because this is, this is between you and you, okay? You don't need to share this out with anybody. But if you are one of those people who really enjoys you know, going on YouTube or Netflix or TikTok, and you find that you're spending hours doing that, write that down. Because the very first thing is you need to recognize that you're doing it and then really try and figure out how much time you're spending doing that. That's really, really important. We're back to that green power sign again. So remember what I said, in order for us to change our habits or start a new habit, start simple, do one thing different, think about a strategy or a tool that you already have or that you already know about, set a reminder for yourself, 
but also be kind to yourself. So I just wanted to remind you of that. So let's go ahead and start simple and try one thing a little bit different. So I'm going to start now with tools and strategies that don't require a whole lot of anything extra. I don't need to go out and buy anything. I don't need the latest, greatest app. I might need a pen. I might need a sticky or maybe a highlighter. But chances are, if I'm a student, I probably have those things already. So let's go ahead and take a look at some ideas for starting really simply. Making to-do lists. That can be one of the best time management and planning tools out there. Just trying to figure out what it is that we need to do. Quite honestly, if I look around my room, I have stickies everywhere because I'm always reminding myself what I need to do. And I tend to put them in places where I can always see them, whether it's my computer monitor or maybe right on, whoops, I just dropped my phone, right on my phone. But the good part is when I'm done with that, I can rip it up and throw it away. So that's the beauty of to-do lists. Make them comfortable for you. Budget your time. We just looked at what we do every day and we gave ourselves time, many times we're really not even sure how long something takes and we tend not to give ourselves enough time for that task. We think, oh, that'll just take me 15 minutes and it really ended up taking 30 or 45 minutes. So if we're not giving ourselves enough time to finish a task, that's where our time goes. We just all of a sudden, like, where did the time go? So try and think of a way of estimating how much time you might need for certain tasks. And I'm not just talking about schoolwork. I'm talking about things in your everyday life. So we might call that budgeting your time. Now think about a time of day or a certain day where you think you could probably complete these tasks the best. One of the best things that you can do for yourself is Think about a time of day where you feel the most productive. If you're super duper tired in the early morning, why are you going to give yourself a really important task to do early in the morning when you know you probably won't get to it because you're too tired? I'm a night owl. I probably do my best work at night. And even though that's not really great for my sleep and it's not really good for my work schedule, I do know that I tend to work well and I write well and study well later at night than I do say in the middle of the afternoon when I tend to get really, really tired. So think about your own body clock and when you work best during the day. Maybe you need to start budgeting tasks that are a little bit more difficult to do during those times when you're more productive because your body and the rhythm of your body tends to be more focused during those times. That's, that's actually quite important. Give yourself breaks. Don't feel guilty about going on TikTok or Netflix for five or 10 minutes in between tasks. Give yourself that reward. Remember that suitcase that was overstuffed? Sometimes we need to take things out. Sometimes we just need to fill our day with just stuff that can make us smile and laugh and make us feel good. And you know who doesn't like a good reward? We all deserve that. Set timers for yourself, whether it's just your regular kitchen timer, or if you've got a smartphone using the timer on your phone, set a timer to either remind yourself when to begin something or set a timer for how long you would like to stay focused on something. I'm going to show you a couple of apps that are kind of fun, um, even one that's kind of like a game-like app. It's gamified that where um, you might be a little bit more willing to try something if you knew that you were trying to beat the clock on a game. But sometimes timers can, can work for some of us. I'm a big color person. I, I love color. I think working in black and white, like our screen right here, really doesn't do anything for me. But if I can highlight things to let myself be aware, like, hey, this is really important, my mind, my brain, my memory will tend to remember things better. So consider maybe if you had either highlighters or a pen of different colors, maybe you can write things that are really urgent, things that you have to do 
right now, today, you need to get these done. Those are your urgent tasks. Maybe I need to write those or circle those in red. If things are really important, but maybe they're not so timely, they're important to you, but if I don't finish them today, eh, it's not so much of a big deal. Maybe I'm just going to highlight those in yellow just to remind myself, this is important. I need to do it. But if I don't do it today, I'll be okay. And then maybe on my list, I'm going to have things either highlighted or written in green. There are things I want to get done, but the things in red and yellow are the things I need to get done first. And those things in green I can do later, but now I won't forget about them because they're on my to-do list. So here's my power button and here's my to-do list. So I'm going to take some of those things that we just talked about and I'm going to put them into action. So I want to show by modeling how I can use all of these tools and strategies right here using my to-do list. So what I've done is I've kind of made my list of the things that I would like to get done. I gave myself some time for these things as well. So doing the laundry, reading chapter five, which is 14 pages, calling my brother, making my dentist appointment and studying for an online quiz. So I kind of estimated how much time each of these things might take. I could be wrong, uh, maybe reading chapter five because I'm a really slow reader and I have trouble comprehending and I tend to have to go back. It might really take me 90 minutes, but at least I've set aside an hour to do this. So that's a pretty good time. So let's see how I can up this to-do list to make it just a little bit more manageable and a little bit more important. So I'm going to color code this list now by urgency and by importance. So not only do I have my to-do list, but now I prioritized it. The thing that's really important to me is that number one, okay? I've color coded things in red that are urgent. I've added not only the time next to those, but what time of day. I will work on those things. And if you'll notice, I gave myself a couple of breaks because this is a lot of stuff that I'm going to need to do. So I've got studying for an online quiz. I gave myself some time to do that. Maybe around 5.30 after I've taken a walk, maybe I've had a little bit of dinner. After studying, my brain is definitely gonna need a break. So I, I'm giving myself that five minute break. Then I have calling my brother. You know what? I have that in green because I may or may not get to it. It could be a nice break for me in between studying, but if I don't get to it, eh, I don't maybe need to do it today. Maybe I can do it tomorrow instead, but at least it's, it's on my list of things to do. So I won't forget doing laundry. I have to honestly say, I can't stand doing laundry. Um, so, you know, I put it in yellow because it is important because I need cl clean clothes to wear, but uh, it's not necessarily urgent for me, but it is something I need to get done, okay? So I have my time there and hopefully I'll get to it. Um, so as you can see, not only did I take my to-do list, but I've, I've put it in order of priority. I've given my tasks um, recognition of what is urgent versus what is important versus what I could do later. And I've given myself a specific time in the day to get these items completed. Okay, so what do you think about that? Did you see anything so far that you might be willing to try? This could be a really good time right now to just kind of stop and write a note to yourself that maybe one of these tricks or tips is something you would like to try. Maybe you're just going to start writing to-do lists. Maybe you're going to start color, co co color coding your to-do lists, or maybe you're going to start estimating how much time your tasks take or what time of day your tasks will take. Remember, start simple, do one thing different, start with something you know or you're comfortable doing or that you already have, maybe set yourself a reminder and be kind to yourself. So this is a great time to stop. Now it's your turn. Think about your day-to-day, -day, 
your day tomorrow, this week coming up, or maybe this month. What do you have on your plate? You probably have a lot of things. If you're going to school, you probably have homework. If you're teaching classes, you have lessons to prepare. You have papers to grade. If you have a full-time job, what is it about your job that is coming up that's kind of filling up that suitcase of yours that's making it really difficult to kind of plan and manage time for all of the other things in your life? Why not take the time now to write things down, budget how much time these things will take, color code your tasks by importance, and then don't forget to add your, your own rewards or your breaks. Even if you just do one of those things, then your power button is on. So now is the time that we're going to kind of move away from things that maybe you already had, like your basic pen and highlighter and sticky notes. And now let's think about some tools and strategies that maybe are a little bit more high tech. We're surrounded by technology and sometimes we have too much technology or maybe we're just not sure which technology to use. So I wanted to introduce to you a couple of, or actually four apps that are kind of person friendly. You don't need to be this major tech whiz. Um, you don't need to be a computer information systems major to understand all of these. Um, the other thing I tried to do, I tried my best to do, is I tried to find things that were either free or very minimal charge, as well as things that were available both through Apple or Google Play, knowing that we all have different devices. I happen to use Apple, but many of these things that I'm showing you can be also used on an Android through Google Play and, and things like that. So I was trying to be mindful of those. So on my screen right here, you see two apps and both of these are um, to-do list kinds of apps. The first one, which is actually, if you go in and if you, if you were to Google or you know, if you were to search like top um, planning apps, you would see that to do app is one of the top known apps. It's, it's got a, a lot of feet, you know, positive feedback it's used, but it also has a lot of elements to it for. So for those of you who aren't looking for something that's got a lot of buttons and a lot of this and that, maybe this one is too much for you. Maybe you're looking for something a little more simple and that's going to be next. But the to do app does have um, a really nice format where you can um, create lists that are just for home, create lists that are maybe just for school, start and stop times, reminders, you can star things for importance. So that's one of the apps that I invite you to look at. And because you do have a handout resource, you have the links to these. So you can actually stop at any time and search the link as you are looking at this presentation. The second um, app is called Minimalist, and that's all one word, the Minimalist app. So um, I just wanted to, to share that this one is just, it's a little simpler. So this is one where you truly could just make your to-do list. If that's all you wanted to do for this is just make your online to-do list. Maybe you don't have something on your phone like notes that you can use and you wanted something different. You could use Minimalist. But what's cool about Minimalist is you can then set a time for these tasks. So say you wanted to start right now, you wanted to start um, working on studying for a quiz, you could set your timer for say 35 minutes and set it so that right there you're working from your to-do list, but you also now have a timer that's going to help you stay focused just on that task and then let you know when those 35 minutes are over. So it's a little bit simpler in creating the list, but it does offer you that availability to kind of add a timer or an alert to help you with those. 
So here on my screen, I'm just going to show you if you do click on the link, just so you can learn a little bit more about it. And you know, there's a YouTube for everything. So even if you wanted to learn a little bit more about these um, online tools and apps that I'm sharing with you, I'm sure you can search a YouTube video for the how to, um, to use these. But this is the basic link to the to do app where it really just kind of gives you its own version of how to use this app. And then this next one is the minimal list. So it kind of, you know, just to give you a few pictures of what you can do, where you can make your list, you can set your timer, you can add different tasks. So you could have different to-do lists. Maybe you just have a, a list for school. Then you just have a list for home or your job. And you wanted to set timers based on which list you're using. You can do that. So... I just wanted to kind of share what these would look like if you did search these using the links that I've provided. So on our next screen, I have two more apps that I wanted to share with you. One of them that I've used quite a bit, both for myself as well as with students that I've worked with. And the other one that I haven't worked well with as much, but I, I like this app because it really just kind of, um, encompasses all the things that we've been talking about, including, you know, giving yourself timed breaks. So the first app I wanted to share was the forest app. And I happen to also have that on my phone, which I'm showing. So, you know, live it, love it, <laughs> learn about it. Uh, so the forest app is one of those gamified apps that kind of helps you stay on focus and on track. So what's kind of cool about it is you can set your own time, you can create your to-do list, and then you can set your timer to stay focused on your task. So if I knew I was going to spend 45 minutes studying on my quiz, which was that very first item I wanted to work on on my to-do list, I could set my forest app to 45 minutes and start working. And while that's happening, a tree is growing. So the whole game is trying to grow a forest by keeping your goals for staying on, on track and staying focused with your plan and your time management. If you go off, if you, if you cut your time short, or if you go off the app, you kill the trees, you kill the forest. So it's just kind of that gamified way of helping you to stay on track with your planning and your time management. The other app is called Engross, and this is kind of similar to Minimalist or the To Do app, where again you're setting um, lists for yourself to do, but you can also build in break times for things. So if you had a thirty-minute um, time set for studying or reading a book or doing laundry, then you could set your five-minute break. So this will really kind of remind you like, hey, you've only got 10 minutes left and then you get a break, you get a breather. So the Engross app kind of helps you keep those healthy habits of rewarding yourself. So I thought I wanted to share those. So this would be a really good time to stop and maybe click on the link so that you could look at those apps yourself. So again, here is just the um, online link for the Forest app and just wanted to share again that um, it is usable using Apple or Google Play. So if you have an Apple or an Android or some other um, device, you can use this on different types of smart devices. And then the other link, if you are interested in, is the Engross app. So again, Google Play, the App Store, this is where you can find those apps. So hopefully you can take some time and maybe look at the four different apps that I've shared related to planning and time management. Hopefully you can find one of them a little bit useful or even just fun, or maybe you just want to share it with someone that you know needs to use something like this. So we began today talking about tools and strategies based on things that we already probably have in our own home, our own office, our own work area, pens, highlighters, sticky notes, notebooks, we probably have all of those things already. So then I showed you something that's a little bit more high tech. 
using certain apps or online devices and tools that could help. So let's go back to something that all of you already have the access to that maybe you're not using well enough or you're not using effectively, but could be really helpful for you. And that's our calendars. We have built-in calendars with so many of the things that we already have, but maybe we're just afraid to use them or we're really not sure how to use them or we don't really realize how helpful these calendars can be. If you have a smartphone or an iPad or a Chromebook, chances are you have a calendar built in to your smart device. So you certainly can use that. But if you're a student at Bristol or a staff member at Bristol, you've got Blackboard. And within that, you've got the calendars to Blackboard. So if you are taking courses and you are clicking on the courses that you have, chances are the assignments that are due probably populate into your Blackboard calendar so that you can always see what's coming up. And that's not really anything that you can rearrange because that's what your instructors or your professors have arranged. They've set due dates or start times for things. They've let you know when a test is coming up or when a discussion board is due. So if you opened up your calendar, you're going to see colored squares come up related to your class and the assignment is, that is due. But you can add things to your Blackboard calendar as well. So. If you click on a day, if you know that on a day you want to um, have a study group or you want to attend office hours with your instructor, you can click on that day and you can create your own event. So this Blackboard calendar can be used in so many terrific ways and you can write yourself notes about this. If it's an ongoing event, maybe you want to go to your instructor's office hours every week. You can repeat it. You can click the little repeat box so that it populates every week. So, you know, there's, there's a reason these calendars are here. It's not to make your life complicated, but it's really to help remind you that time management is available for you. And your instructors have already helped you by inputting the assignments that are due, and you should see those on your Blackboard calendar. On the right hand side, you might see the calendar from your Office 365 mail. It just comes right along with your mail. So if you had, you know, other devices that you were using, maybe you can sync your Office 365 calendar to something else. Some of the apps that I share today also can sync with your own personal calendars. It's all very different. So you have to kind of look into it. I can't tell you specifically which calendars one will go to. That will be a little bit of work to do. And that's why using those YouTube videos can be so important because they, they share that information with you. But um, it really is nice to see how these calendars can sync with one another. So right here, just by being at Bristol, we have the options for two different kinds of calendars that we could be using probably more effectively to help plan our lives. So consider how you could better use your calendar for yourself, whether it's your Blackboard calendar, your Microsoft Office 365 calendar, um, maybe you can sync things. I know that I've got my Google calendar synced with other calendars so that they can combine because if I have a job somewhere else, I need to know, oh, I can't make an appointment there because I've got this other thing coming up. And so that's really important for me to know. I don't want to overbook myself and I don't want to forget anything. So, wow, we've really talked about a lot of different tools and devices. Some things we already have access to, some things we might want to look into. So now it's your turn. This is a really good time to kind of stop and reflect and think back to the different tools and strategies that have already been offered for planning and time management. We started with those things that, that are quite simple to do. They just require you to, to get your, your hand ready, whether you're typing things or writing things, making those to-do lists, color coding, budgeting your own time, giving yourself breaks. 
but there's also things that you can look into that are a little bit more techy or a little bit more complicated or a little bit more fun, like a gamified app, the to-do app, minimalist, the forest app, the engross app. And then there's things that are built right in because you are a member of the Bristol Community College community. So think about your calendars that are built into Blackboard or that are built into your Microsoft Office account. There's lots of different tools out there. Um, so don't think that you have to use all of them because then you're gonna be going against kind of that reminder of starting simple and doing one thing different. So as we wrap up this session, um, you should have a link that brings you to this really great and short article on time management. It really, it's just kind of a written reminder of some of the things that we've talked about today, but it also might give you a couple of different ideas that you would like to seek out for yourself. So I welcome you to click on the link of this particular handout in these resources just just for your own sake, or maybe share it with your friends or your family who might need some information on time management as well. So I kind of want to wrap up today. There's an article out there, and it's actually called The 12 Time Management um, Strategies of Highly Effective People. I just kind of wanted to stick to 10 because I think they're the 10 that are the most important for all of us to kind of remember. And there is a link, an article link to this that you have in your resources. But um, as you look at these 10 strategies, I want you to ask yourself, wow, did we talk about those here in our, in our session today? Chances are we did. So let's take a look. Plan out each day. We talked about that. We even talked about thinking about all those things that we need to do and we counted up all of the hours that it took to do those things. Prioritize your tasks. We talked about color coding. What's urgent? What's important? What is something that maybe we can do later? Do you have a color coding system that you could use for that? What kind of tools could you use? Your tools can be as simple as highlighters and a sticky note, or as complicated as an app or an online calendar. Multitasking. We might say we're really good at it, but do we actually accomplish things if we're doing too many things at once? And if we can go back and think about the beginning of this session, think about that suitcase that got stuffed. When we do too many things, when we're thinking about too many things, our suitcase or our prefrontal cortex where all of those executive function skills and decision-making skills are stored, it gets full and stuff starts getting kicked out. And that's why we forget to do things. So multitasking, as talented as we might be, can also get in the way of our planning and our time management. Consider when you are productive. What are your best times of the day when you've got that energy where you think you can really study better or really you know, sit down and do a chunk of your to-do list? Find that productive day and maybe reconfigure how you work your day. Remove distractions. That isn't really something we talked about, but you know what? We can be our own distraction sometimes. So sometimes it might even be about removing ourselves and putting ourselves somewhere where we don't have all those distractions like Netflix and YouTube and TikTok. Maybe we need to get away from the iPad or away from the loud music or the TV or the screaming kids in the background. So those distractions can really get in the way. Use a timer or some kind of an alert system. Some of the tools I showed you today have an automatic alert system already built in. Break down your tasks into smaller ones. So even if you've got a large um, research paper or a long-term project to do, you could even break that down into its own to-do list and categorize what needs to be done first, what needs to be done second, and then put due dates next to that. That's still planning out your tasks. Learn to say no. Remember your suitcase gets filled if you've got too many things going on and you say yes to everything, that suitcase is gonna get filled and eventually things are gonna kick right out. So be kind to yourself. You don't have to do everything all the time. Someone else's priority can't always be your priority. So that timing, that planning, 
That's all of prioritizing. And those all go together with those executive function skills. And finally, the best is saved for last. Reward yourself. Give yourself those breaks. Walk away when you need to. Let your brain have a brain break. We all need those. So hopefully through this session, you've thought of one thing that you could do differently that's going to help you start simply. Your power button is on. You're ready to try it. It might be something you already have, or it might be a new tool that you would like to invest in. So think about all of those things. And that is one of the best ways to begin your planning and time management. So what are you willing to try? Talk it out. Tell someone. Write it down for yourself. So I hope that there have been some ideas, some tools, some strategies, some reminders, even maybe there were things that you're like, oh, yeah, I can do that. Um, but hopefully you have found your own strategy for success that you are willing to either try or go back and try again. Um, thank you so much for um, sharing this time with me and using the resources that come along with this session. Um, if you have any questions or if you want any other ideas, please reach out to me. My email address is right there at kit.kelleher at bristolcc.edu. I'm more than welcome to, um, or more than happy to help in any way that I can. But it has been great sharing this information with you. I wish you much success at Bristol. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.